Hey, you have to take it off. Cool! Hey. Oh, hey guys. I didn't see you here. What is up? Today, we are here with our 100 subscribers special. Can you believe it? We have 100 subscribers. That's right, guys. Thanks to you, we have over 100 subscribers, and we thought that for our special 100 plus subscriber special, we would give you a shop tour so you can see what Paul's workshop looks like behind the camera, in front of the camera, and all around. So stay with us. So here is our workbench. It's in most of our videos. So here are our nut drivers, as you can see. And we got a couple of smaller and slightly less small screwdrivers. In the left drawer, we have tape, we have a glue gun, label maker, rubber band. We have a lot of stuff that would be used to hold stuff together. And, and on our right drawer, we have a lot of electronic stuff. Battery, batteries, the Nintendo 64 cartridge slot, the, this football game, and a very small screwdriver to go into Nintendo consoles and controllers. We have a 32 inch monitor connected to a DVD player. We have our boom box for listening to tunes. In this cabinet, we have restoration parts for tube radios. There's uh, replacement tubes. There are just various parts for restorations in there. That's kind of a mess. That's why it's behind the door. Down here, we have our power tool bags and we have some of these drawers that we got free when a, when a hardware store was remodeling, which is pretty cool. So, um, we have some concrete anchors. We got, we got a couple of these too in that drawer. We got some flags and pins. Before we jump into the toolbox, let's take a look at what's on top. Looks like a regular box fan, but this is actually one that we've modified to clear the air. So if we're doing some sanding or something like that, we can turn this on and help kind of purify the air a little bit. So very easy to do. There's online tutorials on how to do that. Simple, cheap, and effective. Here's a throwback. My dad had something just like this. It's the first socket set I ever really got to see. It's a Kmart socket set. So this is vintage. This came from, uh, from eBay. So vintage Kmart socket set. And then we have our half inch drive, 3 8 drive up there. Next up, the screwdriver drawer. As you can see, we're not partial to any particular brand. We have Cobalt, Husky, Craftsman. There's a Snap-on in here. Some Stanley. Uh, when you're a road guy and you've been working for a lot of years on different equipment and things like that, you tend to collect a lot of tools. Next, we have our pliers. So a full selection of pliers. And these, and these, some of these trays are the drawer liners that you buy in well, when Sears was still alive. Uh, I wasn't impressed with those. You'll see as we go into other drawers that I switched to felt, and I found that the felt, actually, I like that better. So here's our wrenches. These are our standard wrenches. The size is all the way up to inch and an eighth. Mostly craftsmen. Next we have clamps, we have vice grips, we have adjustable wrenches. So we have Craftsman. This one is a Williams. The big old crescent wrench, right, Paul? Yeah. This one, shout out to all the tool resto guys. Should have done this as an episode, but I didn't. Pick this up in an antique shop, just did a quickie cleanup on it. Could use a little more grinding in the jaws, but this was really my first attempt at trying to resto a wrench like that. This drawer has all our pneumatic tools. We have our 
extra fittings in there, an impact gun, a Brad Naller, a couple of air, uh, air blow guns, a die grinder. So that's our pneumatic section. Let's come over here to our pullers and lifting eyes. So we have things for lifting heavy whatever, right, Paul? Heavy equipment. Hardened bolts for lifting heavy equipment. These are gear or pulley pullers. Harbor Freight's finest. Yes, sir. Here's a cable puller. Put this on the cable for stretching like uh, whatever, steel cable, things like that. This drawer, we have a huge selection of punches and chisels. There's a brass, couple brass punches in there, a corner chisel. Uh, over the years, these have kind of just, just accumulated. Some of them, you know, they need to be sharpened and fixed up a little bit, but overall, I try to keep them clean and oiled. And it's kind of a junk drawer. Has some things that belonged to Paul when he was a little boy, a little, little boy, like his Elmo hat. Pacifiers are in there. There's some decks of cards that I've collected over the years and bought over the years. This is uh, Desert Storm cards that were popular a while ago. Back when they used to give you decks of cards on the airplane. So U.S. Air from a flight. Uh, you could see a model, uh, model railroad person in there that a friend of mine gave me. And then just some other assorted junk in that drawer. Difficult to open. And it contains giant sockets and stuff like that. Three-quarter drive sockets. We have some tin snips in there. A giant socket wrench. Something you'll notice in my drawers as you go along are these silica gel packs. So when I get things delivered and these are in there, focus. I save these silica gel rather than throw them out. I save them and put them in the drawers to keep the uh, the moisture content down in the tool drawers. So next we have the combo wrenches. Yep, metric and standard. There's a bunch of different brands in there, primarily Craftsman, but you'll also see Pittsburgh in there. Um, the Pittsburgh wrenches, I've had some Pittsburgh wrenches for, you know, 15, 20 years and been happy with them for the price for the six or seven dollars for the set. They're great. Next drawer, Paul. Files and pry bars and pry bars and files. Oh my. Next drawer. We have some torque wrenches. Torque wrenches and ratcheting box wrenches. All right, next drawer. Yep, next drawer. Hand saws. And that, not too much in there, but a couple of hack saws, a cross cut saw, which needs a good cleaning, some blades. And then there's this. If you ever are doing cabinets in your kitchen and you're putting handles on, this is the tool to buy. This is a template for drilling the holes for various types of drawer pulls. So this is something that you need to have on hand. And we got this set of throw ratchets. So these are pretty nice. And what they allow you to do is put a socket on here and you can, with a, like a through bolt socket. So if you're ratcheting a long, a long bolt or something, you have that and you can put the sockets on there. So they're like ratcheting box wrenches, but metric and standard. Came in handy quite a few times. Give it a whirl. We have jigsaws, um, a belt sander, a, I think that's an orbital sander. And in that case is one of those, uh, is a Craftsman multi-tool. And there you'll find, there's Rolmax wire nuts, a couple of fixtures, outlets, plugs. Just various things you might need for doing electrical repairs. Next drawer is our test instruments and ruler. Next drawer, aviation tin snips. Lots and lots of those left over from days of working on the road. We got some seal drivers and Allen wrenches galore. Oh my, oh my. So there's a Almost a full set there. That cobalt one I just recently lost, that metric one on the side. So it's kind of like the 10 millimeter socket. Okay, and the bottom drawer, last but not least, that is... Wait. Oh wait, there's one before the bottom. Hammers. This is hammers. Yeah, 
You'll see a, uh, a hatchet in there. Sure got a lot. Oh, an axe, too. An axe. Well, it's a hatchet. The rocket hammer. There's masonry hammers in there. S-wings. Did some different playing around, clean up and stuff on those to shine, shine those up. Did some... Kind of store the resto, but they need more. But just a quickie to see, to practice. This is the finally draw. Ah, we have an impact in there, which is, uh, that's a Harbor Freight Chicago Electric Impact. That's been pretty good to me. Uh, we have a big drill in there. Um, there's a masonry hammer drill in there. So just uh, your basic tools that you need when you need to plug them in, when you need power to plug them in. While he's closing that, we'll go with just a quick overview to the right. We have up top caulking guns, table saw, saws all, um, multiple different tools and items for working around the house. I'd like to get this thing into a cabinet at some point. Uh, we go down a little bit, we have tile work, that we've done. So we have grout and we have um, uh, different cements and things for tiles. Our air compressor. And under our sheet, we have our tractor. It's our Husqvarna tractor. We have uh, haven't done any features on that yet, but she's put away for the winter. The oil was changed. Uh, everything was lubed up, sharpened up blades. So that's all ready to go as soon as uh, winter's over and spring comes. Here's our slot machine tour. We have one Imaru here, and it's pretty cool. My dad added this arm to him because he wasn't that cool at the start, but now it's pretty fun. Next, we have Natadishu. We got Natadishu and a couple other slot machines from a fourth for a fort slot machine bundle on Facebook Marketplace. And now that you choose cool because the mouse is there and she's a cat. So here we have Charlie's Angel, another part of that bundle. And it has this little screen right here, which is pretty cool. And Mr. Magic, which you may or may not remember from an another video. We have Getter Mouse, which is one of the first machines that we got. It's pretty cool. And right next to it is a machine that has the same body and the first one that we ever got. It is Board of Lights. This is a fire alarm. Where you protect your ears. We have King Pulsar right here. And this is actually um in our first video ever on this channel. Can you believe it? It came out on New Year's Eve 2018. So our next our next machine is my personal favorite. It is King Camel. It has two wheels. And I just want to show you show you something. I don't know if it'll show up on camera. To me, that that wheel right there looks like Wario from Super Mario Brothers. And last but not least is my dad's favorite machine. Beast staff. And I'm just gonna show you a quick little bit of it. This one is cool. It has a screen. Yeah, we promised you a full tour and a full tour you shall get. So there's another 32-inch television. Uh, those were in our other homes and uh, we just, over the years, we upgraded. Those were like a uh, Black Friday deal years ago at Walmart. I think they were like 85 bucks. And, uh, you know, as we've gotten bigger, better televisions, those have been moved out to the garage. So, and there's some of the license plate collection. God. Now, this represents years and years of collection. I started when I was a kid and uh, just been really collecting license plates for a long, long time. Yeah. How, how many and then to the right, neon signs, uh, traffic light, which is run by an Arduino. So, you'll see that'll cycle through red, green, yellow. Uh, just like a regular traffic light on the road would do. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we have We're going to get to the walk, don't walk sign in a second, Paul. I was talking about the payphone. Okay, and now we're green, ready to go. And we have a payphone. Hello? And our walk, don't walk sign. 
and that pretty much also controlled by an Arduino. That rounds out that side. Hello, hold workshop, please hold. Hold workshop, please hold. Oh, so we have our phones here, two old rotary phones, and below them we have some of these other phones. We have this, we have this set of two phones. Those are linemen's phone, linesman phones, and those were uh, what the guys would use when they went up on the pole and they were doing work. There's a vintage Motorola phone there, an old CB radio, a couple of uh, Army phones. Down here we have two ITT phones. This is kind of a neat one here. This is a uh, Decotel. For the sophisticated person. Continuing our tour, we have a scroll saw right here. And below we have a bench grinder that we have set up for polishing right now. Now it's time model shop. So here we have little screwdrivers. Very, very small. We have some little things for heat, extra detail. We have a couple of guys here and a little car. Yeah, we play a little bit with model trains, as you can see there. Thing. Yep, little needle files. We have some flat plier tweezers. Set up for an airbrush is there. We have a, a scale model ruler. We have an airbrush. And an exacto knife set in the blue box. All right, next. This is the paint for all the models. It's we have a lot of paint. Duh. And this is uh, the first rolling toolbox I bought when I was like 18 years old. So these are parts for the 3D printer, which originally was going to live out here in the garage, but it's a bit too cold for 3D printing in the winter. So uh, those parts are in there, though, and there's that box that we save. Save the empty containers from things. They're great. They're free. And this is good. We can take, us, take this with us anytime we want. That drawer has all of Paul's zipline parts in there. So there's extra parts for zip lines. There's another zip line harness. There's rope. Uh, some tokens from uh, down the shore made their way in there too. But we have some, some tickets. tickets. Yeah, we have a bench grinder with a grinding wheel and a brush on it. We have our belt sander here. This is on wheels. Two angle grinders. This one is a Harbor Freight. I think this was $7.99. Works great. Um, it's been dropped a few times. You really can't beat the price. This is another, a real cheapie. This is a Cummins. I bet this is 25. Geez, I can't believe I'm that old. This is 25 years old. This is on a rolling toolbox that was 20 bucks on Facebook Marketplace put some wood on the top. I like to keep all of my workstations on wheels because as you can see, we don't have a lot of room here, but we can roll things in and out. We can take it out to the driveway to work if we want. And then in the drawers, we have sanding belts. We have the parts that go back onto the grinder and the belt sander if we need them. We have organization for our grinding wheels and our flap discs and our polishers. And then in this toolbox here, we have more buffing wheels. Then we have some sanding pads, sandpaper, more sandpaper, steel wool. So this is our grinding, sanding, and buffing station. Next up, this wood cabinet that somebody was throwing away. What I did was I bought one of those Harbor Freight furniture moving dollies. Uh, cheapest way to get wheels are those like $7 furniture dollies from Harbor Freight. In here we keep our spray paint, um, regular paint, wood finishes, so that's all kept in there. We can roll it around, take it where we need to. Next up, you'll remember this from another episode. The welder on the Harbor Freight cart. You really can't go wrong with that cart. And then this is our clamp cart, our workbench, 
we can put um, table saw on there. You see some pushers for our table saw, some C-clamps that need to be cleaned up and restored. There's a bench vise back there. There's our miter saw, and that is on a rolling cart that was free on Facebook Marketplace. You can see along the back, we have uh, PPE there. We have another setup for the zip line. Uh, paint brushes are there. There's a, uh, a code reader for the car. Here's our cordless tools, which you've seen this a lot of times on our channel. When we're working here, there's our drill press and a couple more of those, those free drawers that we got just uh you know bolted together and they are sitting on a harbor freight dolly and that gives us a nice rolling cart for our drill press so and that brings us back to our workbench now that you've seen the workshop comment what you would you what else you would like to see and heck maybe if you're not subscribed yet maybe you should so we can reach our 500 subscribers special quicker